Catholic Lifestyle. My name is Olivia and I'm a lifelong classical ballerina and musician here to teach you how to dance ballet with no experience needed. Now if this is your first time here, I recommend that you go ahead and go to my playlist above so that you can start from the very first video because this is part of a full length course and each video builds off of concepts learned in the previous one. So you can go ahead and do that now. Now if you are a returning student, welcome back. It's so good to see you and I'm glad that you're here. Go ahead and get your dancing gear ready and let's go ahead and get started. Alright everyone, welcome to class today. I'm so excited that you're here. Today we'll be learning some really fun new movements that you'll be using throughout your ballet journey. Um, and those movements would be a passe, a développé, an attitude, and a tonglier. So let's go ahead and get started with the first motion, which is a passe. Now passe in French means pass or past, and uh, what that means is that you're going to be on your standing leg. And you're going to take your working leg, you're going to point it, you're going to start in a sur le coup de pied, which is what we learned in the previous video, and you're going to bring that foot up, and you're going to put your foot in a passe. Now that's kind of how to get to a passe, but just a generic passe position literally just means having your foot in passe here, in which your, your toes are kind of like right below your knee, okay? Now that is a passe devant, um, and also uh, we don't really have a passe à la seconde, uh, but there is a way to do a passe to the back, and that's pretty much the same thing. It's just instead of having your, your working leg toes below the knee here, that they're going to be to the back. Um, and you'll do this if you're doing like a motion called a développé to the back derriere, um, and then also in certain special circumstances. Uh, but more often than not, you're going to be doing a passe devant where your, your foot is uh, pointed right below the knee to the front. Now, something to keep in mind for passe, where we want to have our good posture, holding in our core, our back straight, our shoulders down, our standing leg is, um, is turned out, it is stretched, the knee is not bent, and the working leg is turned out, um, out to the side. You don't want your passe to be front. This is more like a jazz passe. You'll often see people do turns in jazz with the passe turned in like this, or perhaps I think sometimes in lyrical or contemporary. However, in classical ballet, um, unless if there is a very special circumstance, usually in character dancing, the passe will always be turned out to the side. So again, that is a uh, something to keep in mind and, and another uh, motivator for working on your turnout of your legs to the side. And this is the passe to the left. So that you can have um, a passe position uh, that is, I guess, most beneficial for um, transitioning to other movements because a passe, excitingly enough, is a, a very key motion in doing a pirouette. So. Uh, just for fun, I'll go ahead and show you that. So, you know, for a pirouette, you would start in a fourth position, in passe, and then down, okay? We'll go ahead and get to pirouettes later on in your dance journey, but I feel like it's a little exciting to know, like, you are already learning motions that will um, bring you closer to doing a pirouette, which I feel like is um, someone's, or, or many people, when they do ballet, um, their dream is to be able to do fun turns like pirouettes, and I feel like that's one of the main ballet motions and terms that most people who you know haven't even danced before they know what a pirouette is or or they have a, a general idea of what it is so i think that's um something exciting and kind of motivating and and like wow you're already learning this in you know what is this lesson eight or something <laughs> so uh, I, I film a lot of these videos in one take and then i kind of uh, slice them up and and uh publish them so um my apologies if i'm not always 100 percent on knowing exactly what episode we're in but i think this is lesson eight <laughs> hopefully it is <laughs> uh but yeah so we're already learning key um, parts of doing a pirouette, you're almost there. Uh, so again, we have our passe, we've learned passe, can either have the front of the foot, the working leg foot to the front or to the back, um, and that was to the right side, that we have to the left side. And a quick apologies, it is about to rain outside, so my natural light might be a little bit darker, um, but hopefully you still don't mind and, and you're still here following along. So now that we've learned passe, let's go ahead and go to the concepts of développé and arabesque. Um, these two are very much related, and I'll explain why. Uh, but développé means to unfold. And similar to how we can do like dégagés, or frappés, or fondues to the front, the side, the back, um, we can also do a développé to the front, the side, or the back. And when we're doing a développé, we are going to be using passé. So it's very important that we just learned that previously, right? And we're going to start in a third position closed devant to the front. So we're going to 
Um, we'll just put our hand on our hip for now and then I'll show you the arms later. But we'll have our hands on our hips. We're going to go from sur le coup de pied up to passe, extend it to the front. Don't have it turned in, due to the best of your ability, have your foot turned out. And just to close to ferme, we're going to control our leg down so that the toes lightly touch the floor and then close back in a third position, okay? So from there, let's go ahead and do that Alice la second. So we're going to do passe, so we're gonna start with our coupe, or sur le coup de pied, bring it up, and what we're doing to bring it up is we're just keeping the pinky toe, we're kinda of like lightly brushing it along our leg, okay? Lightly tracing your leg. So we start in the sur le coup de pied, the conditional format. We're going to bring it up, slightly touching your leg, and we are going to extend it, control down, close back in a third position. Now the double up page to the back is when our leg will be in an arabesque position. Now I'll go ahead and show you that and then uh, give you some quick knowledge about this. So again, we're going to sur le coup de pied to the back, bring your foot up, passe to the back, extend, control down, close. And you can also do alicicon starting with the passe derrière to the back. So we'll do sur le coup de pied, passe, extend, and close. So again, an arabesque is going to be when your foot is extended to the back, okay? So also something to keep in mind when you are doing your double opes is keeping everything square. So remember that concept is your shoulders are down, your body is all facing the same direction, your hips are level with the floor. Um, you don't want to have, let's say if this is like my double ope front, I know it's low right now, but just for an example, you don't want your hips up or your hips down. You want them parallel to the floor and you want your foot to be turned out, similar to how you want your foot to be turned out to the side and also to the back, okay? So yes, keeping yourself square for double pace is very important, otherwise you can lose your balance. Now, another layer to add on to the concept of double pace is your arm movements, okay? So again, if this is a little bit too much for you to latch onto right now, no problem, you can keep your arms wherever you want to keep them. Um, usually like the, uh, the Royal Academy of Dance Styles, you'll keep your arm kind of like this on your shoulder to kind of practice like balancing. Um, I didn't really grow up learning or doing that. However, you know, maybe that might be a good way for you to start off learning. Um, what I was typically taught in ballet class, if um, moving your arms around was a little bit too much was just to keep your arm in a second position or you can keep your arm on your hip. However, I would say the most proper way to um, move your arms while you're moving your legs and développe is to also almost like développe your arms, which that's not the, the technical term for it, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. So let's say we're starting in a third position with the right foot, the working leg, the right close to the front. Um, you're going to do your preparation and you're going to start in your preparation arms and while your foot is in sur le coup de pied. Then slowly bring your arm up while you're bringing your leg into passe into first. And then, when you double OPE front, you can bring your arm up into a fifth position, or you can bring it out into a second position, okay? Um, but either way, you wanna make sure that you are starting with your preparation, bringing your arm up into first, and then extending, closing, sorry, not closing, putting your foot in a tendu, and closing. So anytime you're doing a développe to the front, you can either put your arms, um, if you wanna be a little bit more um, advanced, put your arms up in a fifth position, look out to the side, or put your arms in a second position, look out to the side um, for, to be more advanced. If you want to just practice um, and be very basic and just focus on the legs, you can simply have your arm out to the side and extend. You can try the rad method where you have your arm like this on your shoulder and you just go out and extend down or just to be very simple, put your arm on your hip, extend, close down, okay? So that is a Dumont double pay all the different ways you can do your arms and your head um, um, movements. Now to do Alice Lacan, um, you're pretty much always going to extend your arm out to the side in a second. Um, in certain cases, uh, in performances, you might have something otherwise. For example, if you're doing turns in Alice Lacan, you might have your arms up while you're turning, or you might have your arms on your hips. But that is kind of like a special case. I would say that you typically, at the bar and for different um, performances, whenever you do a double pay alice con, you can have your arm out in a second. 
So you can practice doing that. So moving your arm down into the, the uh, preparation, following your arm with your head, but you keep your head front whenever you do an alpha plunge to the side. So again, we're going to follow the arm, head front, close back. Now, the goal of a double o payoff con is to have your leg, when it's extended, behind the arm. You don't want it to be in front of the arm. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. So we're going to do our preparation and extend, close back. Now, to do the arabesque, so the double o pain to arabesque, we're going to have our arms here. Do our preparation. We're going to bring the arm up with the leg, extend your arm front, look to the back and close, okay? So again, those are more advanced arm movements and motions that you can go ahead and do. If you aren't comfortable with that now, that's totally fine. You can go at your own pace. Again, this is your class and your practice, so you do what's best for you. I'll go ahead and do everything to the left side. A quick note that it is about to rain, so if you hear some light thunder, maybe just think of it as some nice ASMR for practice. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and do, uh, facing to the left, we have our Third position, left foot closed front. Preparation, bring the foot up with the arm. Extend, close front. Bring the foot up with the arm, extend to the back of the arm, close back. Bring the foot up with the arm, arabesque, close back. Bring the foot up with the arm, behind the arm, close front, okay? So typically, what you use double for in ballet is for a portion of the bar called adagio. And adagio is usually a slower paced uh, combination. And this is one of the things where either students typically tend to really like it or really not like it. <laughs> I guess it kind of depends on your strength and flexibility and uh, how comfortable you are with keeping your leg extended um, for sustained periods of time because often <laughs> you might go to a class and the teacher will call for your arm to be extended to the side for quite a few counts and that might be a little bit difficult. If you don't have the leg strength or the flexibility or you know the strength behind your knee to be able to keep your leg out for such a long period of time. Now because this is a beginner class I will be doing rather um, I guess uh, developes that don't last for too long um, so that you can just kind of get used to the general motion when we progress later on in the course I'll go ahead and you know maybe throw in some trickier combinations where we will have to have our legs extended for a little bit longer. Um, but just to get the basic fundamentals down, we'll do some quicker devil okays here. Um, also to spare myself because it is kind of draining and I've been dancing for quite a bit today filming all these videos. So um, it works in both of our favors today. <laughs> so for our first combination for this class, let's go ahead and do a simple adagio combination with our devil okays. Um, we can do something, we'll just do one développé en trois, so let's go ahead, we'll start in the third position, we'll do our preparation, we'll go ahead and do a développé to the front, let's keep our arm up like this, then we'll close, again you can keep your arm up here, or to the second, or here, you don't even have to bring your arm up if you don't want to, um, you can go ahead and try that again at a later time, but if you want to go ahead and follow along with me, we can do the full arm and head movements so that you can kind of get used to that, or even just looking at it can be helpful, um, just to kind of keep that in mind for the future. So again, we'll start, we'll do our preparation, we'll do extend, double pay to the front, and then we'll close to the front, we'll do double pay a la seconde, close to the back. Remember, that's an odd number, we're doing one en croix, so we want our foot to end up in the back because we're going to go to the back next, right? So then we're going to do our double pay, uh, arabesque, close. Then we're going to do a double pay a second. We're going to close. And then we'll do something fun. We'll go ahead and go into a passe in first position. And you can either keep it there, or you can balance, or you can even do a relevé. And then we are going to close, end there, and then go to the next side. So again, real quick, we are going to do this is for the left. We're going to do our preparation. And we're going to go um, double pay devant. And close, développe à la seconde. And close, développe arabesque. And close, développe à la seconde. And close, then we're going to go into the passe, arms in first position. You can either stand here or keep your, uh, sorry, or move your arm to a full first position. Or you can also go into a relevé and then close. And we will go ahead and end there, okay? 
And I close in a fifth position at the end. You can either close in a fifth position or close in a third position, whatever is most comfortable for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Great job, everyone. So just a quick uh, tip on how to add maybe a little bit more flair to your uh, developes and, and your arabesques is after you extend your leg, if you want it to look even more um, elegant and graceful, when you're about to close, you can, for like a split second, gently lift your leg even higher and then close. And that'll look a lot more elevated um, prior to your closing, and I'll show you the difference. So let's go ahead and do a développé devant. I'll show you real quick. So if we do a développé devant, just normal and close, right? So we do that again. This is just a normal développé devant. Close. Now take a look at the difference when you lightly lift your leg at the end, almost like an allongé, but like with your foot. So we'll go ahead and do the développé and close. You see the difference? Let's go ahead one more time. Okay, so um, again, these are some very minor details in ballet, but those minor details can make such a big difference. And again, if you don't have the leg strength or the flexibility to lift your leg higher when you come back down, that's totally fine. And just a quick note that you can do that Alice Con too. So when you're, you have your double play Alice Con, you can go higher and lift down, especially for arabesque that looks very beautiful. Um, let's say if you're doing like an arabesque, right? And lift up and close down. It just looks a lot more elevated, but don't get me wrong, a normal, regular, um, arabesque or just a little page of the front or to the side and closing still looks very beautiful but that's just a quick tip for those of you who might want to try something a little bit um, different and a little bit uh, more advanced right so let's go ahead and learn two more concepts for today's class those concepts will be attitude as well as tonglié so for an attitude um, it's very interesting it's almost like a double okay except almost like you stop half the way there and I'll kind of explain what that means so for an attitude, which you can do to the front, to the side, or to the back, although I will say attitude to the side is a little bit, uh, I don't want to call it weird, but it's not really done quite often, um, but it is something that you can do. But what an attitude looks like is you'll be doing a développé, and you keep your leg, your working leg bent, and it's kind of, you want to keep your thigh though at like a 90 degree angle and have as much turnout as you can actually. Um, I don't have a perfect turnout for this and, uh, you know, again, it's something that I need to work on in my own personal training, um, which is great. That means I have goals and things to achieve, so that's exciting. It's a good opportunity, right? As for, you know, I'm sure you have things and goals that you want to work on in ballet, so that's also an exciting opportunity. Uh, but just something to note is that really the, um, the goal for an attitude is to have your leg, um, your thigh extended at a 90 degree angle with the working leg bent and the toe pointed. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. So that is an attitude devant. Um, and Alice Lacan, um, oh, 
there's the thunder. <laughs> but uh, in attitude to the side, looks very interesting. Um, again, it's kind of, it's basically like a, a, a double page to the side, um, but you just kind of keep your leg bent here. It's not really used very often, uh, but it is used sometimes. And then the attitude uh, derriere, we have, it looks like a passe again, and then you stop with your thigh, it will be like a 90 degree angle, and your leg bent with the pointed toe. So, um, now you don't have to necessarily get into an attitude by doing a devil okay motion. Um, oftentimes, you can simply, you might have a combination, for example, if we're doing like a grand jeté, um, which is a different motion, which I'll show you later, but if you're in doing like a grand jeté combination, you might have something that calls for just going directly to an attitude, okay? Um, so, that's kind of like a fun little thing to keep in mind is that you won't always devil okay into an attitude. Now I'll go ahead and show you attitude to the left just so you can see what it looks like. So we do kind of similar arms to double OK. We're going to go ahead, attitude to the front, okay, attitude to the side, attitude to the back, or here, <laughs> and then attitude to the side, okay? And again, if you're going to go to straight to an attitude, you can just kind of go like this. I did a little releve there. Sometimes people will go from go into a releve attitude, same thing to the back, releve attitude. That's part of um, a very famous combination, the pubic combination from the ballet Don Quixote. You'll see um, the pubic character from one of the scenes kind of do like an attitude combination like this. I forget the exact steps. Um, I don't have, I haven't done that variation in a long time, but um, she also do like a little attitude to the front. Um, so that's kind of like a fun, fun little tidbit of information. If you want to go ahead and look up that variation after this video is done is um, the Cupid variation from Don Quixote. It's very, very cute and, and sassy and fun and uses a lot of attitude releves, or releve attitudes, I guess you'd say. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, um, now that I taught you that, let's go ahead and learn ton lie. Now ton lie is a weight transfer. This motion is uh, very vital to ballet. You, you'll, you'll use this in a lot of different um, combinations and in different floor work and performances. And again, it's just simply a weight transfer. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to do ton lie, but I would say as a beginner, you'll most often be doing ton lie in a second position. So let's say we're starting in a second position. Our standing leg is the left leg. We have our arms out in second. A ton lie would look like this. You're going to transfer your weight in second position to the right foot. So this is a ton lie. So we start off with our weight on one leg, on one standing leg, you're going to transfer your weight by going to a transitionatory position, which in this case is second position. Transfer the, la the weight to the other leg, okay? So you can also do that from like fourth position. So let's say we're doing a combination where we're doing our working leg is going to the front, right? So let's say we have our working leg, we're doing something um, to the front, right? You can do a ton lie, transferring your weight to the other leg, ton lie back. Or same thing if you're doing with your working leg to the back. Let's say we have like a, a, a tanji to the back. You can do a transition to the front. And then transition back again. Those are ton liés. Um, and I think I kind of brought this up in the arabesque concept. But for usually for an arabesque, you'll have your arm extended out to the back. For an arabesque type, um, type motion, you'll have your arm extended. Um, oftentimes there are different arabesques where Maybe your arms will be like this, where the arm, the same arm as your arabesque leg is kind of out to the side. But typically at the bar, you have your arm up like this and your head extended outwards like that. So just a quick little tidbit of information when you're doing your, an arabesque or just a, a devant motion to the back, right? So I think we will go ahead and do our final combination for this class. Um, and I will go ahead and teach you that now. Alrighty, so for this final combination for this class, I'm very excited. Uh, we're going to be doing some slightly advanced things, but I feel like um, you can handle it. You got this. We're learning so fast and so much, and I'm so proud of you. So I feel like you'll definitely be able to follow along. But again, if you need to slow down or if you need to change the, um, the speed of this video, you can do that by going to the gear icon below and clicking the speed. You can put it at a half speed, 0.75 speed. Um, you can do it at your pace so that it is slower if you need to be slower. So for this combination, we're going to go ahead and do... Uh, tendu, tendu, attitude, ton lie, en croix. So what that will look like is we are going to do, I'll just put hands on hips for now. We're going to start in third position. We're going to do tendu one, tendu two, attitude, 
tonlie, tonlie, close. So with the arms, if you want to do the arms, we'll do our preparation, and we will go tondu, tondu, attitude, tonlie, and close. And we'll go tondu, close back, tondu, close front, attitude, step directly into tonlie. Now when you do a tonlie away from the bar, I'll kind of uh, turn my body this way so you can see better. You're going to have your foot in the Alice Kong, tendu. You're going to plie in second position. Put this arm into second position. Look over to the direction that you're transferring your weight in. And then go back and close. All right, so I'll do it to the side one more time, starting from the front. We'll go tendu, close back, tendu, close front. Add a two, tendlie, tendlie, close back. Oops, close back. <laughs> and I'll do tendu, close back, tendu, close back, attitude. Now, when you typically transition for a tendlie from, uh, from a motion to the back, um, you typically um, put your, your arm into first position, look kind of like under your arm, not too much, but slightly under your arm, and then go back into your arm extended front and the elongated front and close. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that again at more of a natural pace. So we'll go ahead and go tendu and close, tendu and close, add a two, tendlie, tendlie and close. And you close the arm in the first position from there. So transition here into first position, okay? And then finally, for the last part of our encore, so we have our arm here after we close to the back. You're gonna open up to the second, tendu, close front, tendu, close back, add a two, tendlie, tendlie, close front, and then from here, we can go ahead and practice a, let's see, attitude devant balance. So we can go ahead and develop a attitude to the front. You can stay here with your arm on the bar. You can take your arm off the bar, or you can choose to releve. But either way, we're gonna close and end, okay? I typically close in the fifth position, but you can close in a third position if you would like with the right foot facing front for the right. Now let's go ahead and do the left side. We'll go ahead and mark it. So. We are going to do preparation, and one, and close, two, and close, add a two, ton lie, notice how I'm bringing my arm down to first, my chin down, look over my shoulder, LMJ to the front, and then reverse it, bring your chin down, arm through first, look under the arm here, not over here, okay? Chin down under the arm. So let's go ahead and do that one more time just so you can see the motion of the heads and the arm, sorry, the head and the arm. And again, if this is a little bit too much for you at first, you can just simply keep your arm on your hip or here or in second position. But if you wanna see a bit more advanced way of doing it or just looking at it, we'll go ahead and uh, demonstrate that right now, okay? So again, preparation, arm up in fifth. Looking under the arm, we go one, two, attitude, bring it down, ton lie, bring it down, ton lie, and close arm to the second. We go one, close back, two, close back, attitude, tell me look to the side, tell me look front, close down, one, and close, and two, and close, attitude, tell me tell me and close, one, and close, front, two, close back, attitude, look over your shoulder, and close, now remember, we're going to develop a front, attitude, you can either stay here, put your arm up, or releve, but either way we're going to close and finish in either a fifth position or a third position, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on our last combination for this exercise, or I mean for this lesson. <laughs>
everyone. You did such a great job. I'm so very proud of you. Thank you for showing up today, working on your, your goals, learning new things, and just for joining me in this beautiful class. Um, I will go ahead and do my reverence to you. Thank you very much for joining me today. Again, it was a pleasure. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I'll go ahead and put in the uh, space below what we will be learning next class. I really hope that you could join me then. And if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that good stuff. And I will be so happy to see you in the next video. Take care.